A couple of weeks ago, I brought to your attention a great little freeware application called SimBrief Panels. And this allows you to import SimBrief data into any aircraft, GA or otherwise, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The developer, Arta, more commonly known as Flying Art, has also been working on another application. This time it's payware and it's called SimBox. What this application allows you to do is transfer various actions and activities to your mobile devices or your web browser. In terms of mobile devices, it can be Apple or Android, it can be your mobile or cell phone, for example, or in my particular test case, it was the tablet. Now, the various functions are defined by profiles and include such things as autopilot, lights, and so on. Um, but what's got me particularly interested, it includes the FMC for PMDG 737 and also the MacDo for the fly by wire. A320. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. From the developer's website, here's a list of default profiles included at the time of recording this video. It includes both Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane 11 and X-Plane 12. Also includes the various functions or activities that have been mapped. Not all functions are available to all profiles. From the limited testing I've done, I can tell you that the PMDG and fly-by-wire coverage is fairly comprehensive. However, the Phoenix A320 has some limited functionality. I anticipate greater coverage and further improvements as well as profiles, as the developer is fairly active with this product. The download provides you with a setup.exe file, which you run on your PC. It puts a SimBox icon on your desktop. You'll need to enter a license key following your purchase. There is a free trial option. It provides you with limited functionality and limited time. Run the application and you're initially presented with this image. This is the SimBox control. You also need to download an app for your mobile device. Multiple mobile devices are supported. The app is required for each device that you want to put this on. You can click on the SimBox app, which will take you through to a link, or as I did, simply download it through your Apple Store or Android apps directly onto the mobile device. Mobile and PC have to be on the same network and the mobile app, which is called the SimBox Client, will ask you for your computer's IP address. Conveniently, it is shown under the SimBox app, so you don't have to go searching for it. And you should only need to do this once. Make sure SimBox Control is running on your PC. Open SimBox Client on your mobile device. Enter the IP address and the message will change to not connected to simulator. We're done with the client for now. Simbox Control on your PC and Simbox Client on your mobile both need to be running prior to starting Microsoft Flight Simulator. At the top of the app is the connection status. The USB indicates whether any hardware control device is connected that'll work in tandem with the app. I won't be covering that in this video, but details on the Flying Art website if you want to know more. The simulator connection will turn green once you've started the sim and spawned on the runway. Turning to the menus on the left, here are the standard profiles, and the profile indicate what functions are available. As mentioned earlier, not all functions are available in all profiles. Under the GA profile, for example, you only get autopilot, lights, and radios. The profiles shown here include Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane. For the PMGG 737, we can see there's autopilot, radio, lights, transponder, APU, and the FMS. The developer has also been very open about any known issues and limitations, and you can find out what they are by simply clicking on that profile. The next menu item is plugins. This is for Microsoft Flight Simulator only, and you must install as it places the sim box icon in the top toolbar within the sim and you'll need this to connect to your mobile app. Selecting Documents will take you via your browser to the developer. And here there are comprehensive help and guidance for the installation and use for both the SimBox Control and the SimBox Client. These will help you step by step, and if you do purchase this, I strongly recommend you read through before trying to use the app itself. The remaining menu items you'll find your way around easily and they're self-explanatory. There is one very important point to note. If you plan on using the FMC or MacDo, 
in any of the aircraft that support it, the Simbox control application must be run as administrator on your PC. Repeat, run as administrator or the FMC functions will not be available in Sim. So it's now time to start the Sim. I've selected PMDG 737-700 for our test today, although we will have a quick look at GA right at the end of the video. We've spawned, in this case I'm on the runway, and we're at one of my favourite airports, it's South End from Pilot Plus. Let's jump into the cockpit. We're not yet connected to the tablet, as we need to enable Simbox. We do this from the top menu, there's the icon, communication is initiated, and it's automatically picked up what aircraft we're in. You can change this of course, but it's not recommended, as you'll get a mismatch in terms of the configurations. And here it's indicating a matching configuration to PMDG's Boeing 737. So I'm happy with that. Select that one. Let's check some basic functionality before we dive into the FMC. Menu options are shown along the top. I'll select the first one, Autopilot. Some are just button presses, Enable, Disable, such as Autopilot on or off. But I've touched on Heading to highlight it. And as we do so, our virtual wheel is shown. We can then move that left or right to change the value of the heading and note how quick the response is, it's instantaneous. How fast you move the wheel will depend how quickly the values change. I'm now doing the same for the altitude. What's showing on the tablet and in SIM? Well, they match. Let's test out the radios and for this I'm just going to use COM1 which is up here in the top left. I've highlighted and selected the standby frequency and two virtual wheels or knobs are shown. One to change the decimal values and the lower one to change the whole numbers. I can swap frequencies and again you can see response is very good indeed. Let's test out the lights quickly. I'm just going to choose the runway turn off lights and taxi lights as I flick them on the tablet so they change in the sim. Let's test out the transponder. So we'll select that from the top menu, change our view quickly so that they match. There we go, that's a bit better. I'm going to touch the selector knob to make that active. We can see it changes color. And once again, we can move our virtual knob left and right. And once again, it matches up to the sim. We can change the squawk code. Here we can individually change the first two numbers and selecting the second disc, we can change the third and fourth numbers respectively. I'm sure you're getting the gist by now. Also an option to turn the APU on and off. And as I started Simbox Control in Administrator mode, the FMC option is showing. If I hadn't started in Administrator mode, it would not have been visible. The reason we start in Admin mode is we need to create a virtual display, as indicated on my tablet. When I select Enable, that new display is created. And we can see that if we go to our display properties. I'm currently only using one monitor. It's seeing my tablet as a second monitor. And it's showing on the FMS display. You can of course move it anywhere you want to. Just make sure you hit apply. Make sure you remember its position. I'm happy with its current position. In SIM moving over the FMS screen 1. Right alt and left click pops out the display. This is now a completely separate window. You can resize it if you want, but it should auto fit anyway. And now it's a simple case of dragging it, remembering where it was in your display properties. Get the bulk of it showing in the FMS. There it is. I now select full screen. And now the FMS display is fully visible on my iPad. It's not a perfect fit. I can adjust that, but it's good enough for this demo's purposes. If you're wondering, popping out this additional display cost me about 5 to 7 FPS. OK, we can now give the FMS a go. Or in fact, FMC, I stand corrected, Flight Management Computer. We've chosen FMC, and we can see that data is exactly the same, which is no surprise as it's simply duplicating the display. And the buttons are mapped appropriately, so there's not much we can't do on our iPad or tablet, which may well be considerably easier for you than using the mouse in SIM. We're going to be departing from Gatwick, so let me enter that into Origin, and we're going to skip all Echo Hotel Alpha Mike, and enter that as our destination. 
Again, I've matched these up in real time as much as the video editing would allow me and we can see the response is very, very good indeed. I'll now go ahead and put in a flight number. Doesn't really matter what it is, it's just a demo. Tap the LSK next to flight number and it's entered. That's correct. And we're going to be departing runway 26 left. So we'll enter that. We can now select departure and arrivals, for example. And that menu should come up. And the departure I'm looking for is the Fran 1 mic. Not there, so next page. There it is, Fran 1 mic, select that. That's great, we can now go on to our route. Setting up your flight plan, weight variables, etc. On your mobile device is so much quicker and easier. And you don't need a particularly high-powered tablet to do this. And many households have a spare tablet or two laying around anyway. Now just putting in an airway, I think it's M604, into that. And our exit point is Gasper. Into that on the iPad. Let's see if I can remember how it's spelt. I think it's BA. And press the key and it's in. After having used this for a little while, I, there's not much that you can't do. Okay, that's the look at the FMC or FMS. We'll now have a quick look at the other end of the scale and have a look at GA aircraft. And the one I've chosen is the default King Air 350. I've changed the profile on my tablet to GA default. And note that this profile will work with many of the aircraft, but not all the functions with all the aircraft. I found some incompatibilities with the TBM 930, for example. First of all, I'm going to select heading. Once again, we've got the virtual knob. And as we rotate it, so we can see that the indicator is moving. We can move it slowly, degree by degree, or very fast. The option is ours. There's the basic range of autopilot facilities available. There's also an option for radios. We can see them displayed on the PFD and the numbers match. And then of course there are lights as well. Let's have a quick look at that. We'll just need to hide the yoke so we can see the switches moving. So nav lights on and off and the switches moving almost instantaneously. Next, let's test the beacon light, and we can put that on and off. Up is on, down is off, obviously. And as we change it on the tablet, so we can see it here moving on the panel. That all seems to be working fine. We'll perhaps try one more. Uh, let's try the strobe. And that one's also working. Fairly basic functionality for GA, but still very useful. I did try it in the fly-by-wire Airbus and functionality was very much along the lines of the PMDG 737. Just a note that as it can support multiple devices, you could have the FMC on one mobile device and autopilot on another, for example. Well, that's my first look at Simbox from Flying Art, an application that can move functions and actions to a mobile device or your web browser. For me, the value in this package is in the ability to have access to the FMC and MCDU within the various aircraft. More realistic, arguably, and certainly easier and quicker. I think the pricing is reasonable for what you get. Considering standalone FMCs, etc. will cost you many hundreds of US dollars. For me, it's a great addition for any airline pilot. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.